everybody. I'm Jennifer Chamberlain. Welcome into the studio. And tonight is about backgrounds and collage and another component to building the layers of mixed media. Welcome in. So I'm going to start out by asking you, what types of eph eph ephemera, do you know what ephemera is? First of all, E-P-H-E-M-E-R-A. That basically means things that are made of paper that are intended to be thrown away and not kept. Things that are made of paper that um, we consider like collectible now, but at the time they were used, they were not. Does that make sense? Postage stamps, envelopes that were addressed. Um, anybody else want to add to that? Anybody want to add to that? It wasn't intended to be anything of value, in other words. Sometimes, but now it now it has value because it has become antique or vintage or rare. Tickets, bingo cards, keep them coming, guys. We have people who are brand new to mixed media, so those of you who have done it before, keep the comments going with your thoughts as we go along. Words, yes, old recipe cards, safety envelopes, sheet music. So I'm going to go through my stash here in a minute. And you're going, remember when I talked last night or even on the first night, day one, we talked about our space and I talked about not being super organized. Look at those comments coming in of ephemera. I love it. I talked about not being super organized and that I kind of root through my stuff. You're going to get a small glimpse into what it's like to root through my stuff tonight. I have a stack that I'm going to go through with you. But first, let's start with just getting used to what a background in mixed media might look like. And I just want you to know that we're touching on it tonight. We're touching on it. It is the honest truth that if you're painting papers, if you're making backgrounds, the options are absolutely limitless for what it can look like, what materials you use, what you use to make color, what you use for your collage, what you do it on, you know, your substrate and um, what design, I mean, everything's just limitless. The tools that you use to make marks, limitless, and that's what I love, but I don't wanna overwhelm you. So we're gonna limit it to a few ideas tonight, okay? Especially for those of you who are newer. Old cards from games, time cards, magazines, old diaries. Ooh, I've never come upon an old diary. I do find old handwritten letters and I feel like I'm a little bit intrusive on somebody's privacy from like the 1940s or whatever. But a diary, that would be cool. Greeting cards, yes. So let's talk about backgrounds. And I'm going to go through some of my projects. What you're going to see here are projects that are in the library for my sisterhood of maker bees. So these are classes that I have taught and we have done start to finish. But we did do the components that went into it. And... You know, we all have permission. I give my members permission. I remind them you can do little bits at a time. You don't have to do everything at once. So here we have a pretty basic background. We have a surface where the flowers are sitting on, and then we have this pretty neutral background. But when you look up close, you can see there is a little bit of paper collage back there. We have drips and splatters and things that make that background more interesting than just being like an ivory painted background. It just adds to the depth. It adds to the interest. It's just more enjoyable to look at. And I'll just touch a little bit on the flowers here. Another example of background collage. That was just paint with a little bit of paper. This is total paper. This is more blocked out. So sometimes I do something. I'm going to make myself smaller really quick. Okay. Sometimes I do backgrounds where I'm ripping paper. It's very mishmash. Um, the paper is all jagged in different size, uh, different sizes, different shapes. And sometimes I do something that looks more blocked out like this does. And for some reason, I felt like with the bike, this worked and I really like it. Um, sometimes I have a theme to what I'm doing. So if I'm doing flowers, maybe the background papers are from a gardening book, are from a flower book, are words about flowers or gardening or spring or whatever. Sometimes it really is not anything special. It's just to get some type of depth of font, color, the aged look of the papers, and there's no intention for the images or words to add meaning to the art. It's just to be more visually interesting. This I is a little bit of both. Um, I thought the telegraph 
paper was really, really cool. And it has like an address as if she could be on her way to deliver a telegraph. And when I taught this class, I told them to think of it as like a daydream. Um, it's kind of a, it's a, it's a visual into her mind almost where she's thinking about delivering the telegraph. This is a map of the roads. We've got this little boy on the bike down here. There is a word search kind of random. There's a little girl behind the tire here that's on the street with a little lamppost there. Um, so, and then there's a little letter. Maybe she's thinking of somebody. So this, this is more blocked off, which is another type of look, okay? This one is a little darker, a little grungier. Sometimes I can be super bright. Um, sometimes I go a little grungy and the cake is all painted paper. Fun. You can see how it's limitless. We know the basics now. You're gonna know the components that go into making a mixed media project. But the joy in taking classes with me is that I will give you the guidance as to now, what can we put them together to become? And so that's, if you're looking, all these different things are things that I've taught and we take those components and we give them a place, a thing to become, a scene to become, a story to be told. And so satisfying and so fun. So sometimes we're doing a collage that means it's a scene. So it might be a landscape. We need green on the bottom, brown on the bottom, blue on the top, a sunset on the top. So it's very specific. And in this case, the background collage, I had very specific to a beach. So we knew that we wanted these neutral colors in the foreground, these blues in the background, and then we added some paint. But even though there is paint, there is collage back here as well. And I've got something here that says, can you see where it says, keep on smiling? And part of the joy of collage, I don't know what has gotten on here. Part of the joy of collage is when you put things on here and you kind of end up painting it a little bit. Some of the collage peeks through and the little messages that come through are kind of surprising and fun. But I have old wallpaper here. I have just plain construction paper. There's an old handwritten letter there that I've torn but you put it this way, you can kind of see that it's a letter, part of that neutral. And then the beach houses are collaged as well and they're made with fabric. I wanted to talk about the substrate. Now we're gonna move into substrates. And substrate means what you're creating on. What you just saw, every single thing that you just saw was made on either mixed media paper or watercolor paper. But sometimes I can work on something as simple as a grocery bag. So this, I just cut the brown paper to be the size that I wanted to frame. So this is like a four by six. I can put it in a four by six frame. And that is my background is just the brown paper. And then I just did a block on top of that. And then my little person. So backgrounds, collage, a little, a cute little work of art that's quick and easy, satisfying. This one is on a board, but it's wood. And it has this little frame around it. And this is pretty basic background. I wanted it to look mysterious. This is not a canvas. Um, you can, it's not a canvas board. We did a really simple background, dark cradled wood panel. Thank you. That's what it is. So we did the background pretty simple. We wanted to look like a misty night. So we have the darkness and then the light and so I taught how to do that. And that's just another example. We took it all the way around the edge. And then the collage here is actually pretty simple, but really fun. This was made with old book spines. And again, for those who didn't have book spines because they're not hoarders like I am, I made a copy of mine. And so we, we did that. And then we used pieces of collage to make the little roof and to put in the little details. Man, that was a fun class. So other substrates, that was a cradled board. Thank you. This is just a regular old piece of wood. This is scrap wood. And let me just give you a tip. You can go to your Home Depot or your Lowe's store and they have cut off pieces of wood that they're trashing. Go and look for it in the lumber department and grab a couple of pieces of wood. It's super fun to collage and make a little scene on here. You don't have to frame it. You can sit it on your mantle, sit it on a desktop. Really, really fun. Um, in fact, I have another piece, couple of pieces I want to play with 
that I found at my um, Home Depot store. There's a bigger piece like this, and then I found a triangle. So what am I going to make out of that? A cute little collage house. Another type of substrate. Possibilities are endless. Here is a food box. And look, when I cut it here and I spread it out like this, I have so many options for a substrate. This can be cut into 4x6, 5x7, 9x12, 8x10. I can cut my ATCs out of here again. Those are artist trading cards. They're standardly 25 by 35 inches. We can cut out of there. This is the watercolor paper I primarily use. I don't have a brand that I favor. I just buy whatever I can find the least expensive at the time. Um, I like to buy the pad and it's perforated and you can just pull it out or you can work in your book either way. There are other things that you can create on. If you have other ideas, put it in the comments. But my point is to tell you that there are so many options. And a lot of the times I like to find things like the wood that's been scrapped or the food box that's free. <laughs> that's my favorite. The back of a pad of paper, chipboard. Um, Sandra Trent says comic book boards or poster board. Yes, MDF board, sure, absolutely. We're gonna pretend like we're rooting through my stash and I'm gonna show you some of my favorite things to look for when I'm in the thrift store or the antique store at an estate sale or somebody else's stuff they're wanting to get rid of, which I do get a lot of calls and emails. Do you want this? A lot of times I, I'm pretty picky. I try to be pretty picky, but sometimes I do take um, what people are getting rid of. So I really love, love, love old recipe cards. And when I find them in the recipe box, my little heart goes a flutter flutter. And I love using them in my collage because you get so many options. So look. We've got cute little fonts. We've got little images. We have somebody's old handwriting. Oh, we have, let's see. Some of these are in the book. So we've got little things inside of here. We have some where she's cut out. So we've got this. So if you find them where they're in the box still, I think this is so special. And look, this one's written with bigger and pencil. So I like to have a variety of the handwriting. You know, handwriting itself is becoming obsolete and vintage and antique. My kids have a hard time reading cursive. Kathy has a good question. She says, would you copy those or use the original? I, 90% of the time I'm using the original. I get a lot of satisfaction out of putting use to the stuff that I find. But if there's something that's super precious and I'm like, wow, we're never going to find this again, I'll make a copy or I'll just frame it <laughs> the way it is or just put it away in a little book. But um, I tend to just use what I've got in the collage. I think that's part of the joy for me. Okay, so anyway, you know what old recipes look like in old recipe cards. Look at this little piece that's in here. Look at with the different colors and the recipes and the little vintage image. Love it, love it, love it. And these are just a few that I picked from my stash that I already had that I've used. So you could just see this one turned out great too last night. So those are collage options. I love old patterns, not only for the packaging, but for the little tissue that has words and numbers and it's transparent. Remember we talked last night about how cool it is to have things that are transparent to give you that really in-depth visual on your piece so that you can kind of see through all the layers. So look for old patterns. They don't have to be old. I prefer the old. I mean, look at those old images. If I'm doing something in the garden, if I'm doing something, you know, that requires like a childlike feel to it, I'm going to put these little girls in my collage somewhere. Um, this is like an old piece of ledger paper. Love it. Look at that old writing. Oh, love it. That's going to go into a collage sometime. Old wrapping paper. Old photographs. Yes, even though they're shiny, I will still use. This is one of those things that I might photocopy just because of this is super shiny and this could be a little thick to collage. But just these images. Look at the little boy with the chicken. Chickens. I love that. 
old advertisements from magazines. And I may not use her, but I might use the little flowers here or the word beauty, special. Um, her face might end up somewhere. You never know. This is one of my favorites, those of you who have taken a class from me before, the old Ideals magazines. Um, I love them because the pages, we talked about magazines, it's okay to use the glossy, but if you don't want to worry about it, the Ideals magazines not only give you vintage options and beautiful images, fonts, words, artwork, sketches, but they're matte finished paper and they have a really nice weight. I feel like if I'm looking for words, this is a great option for finding really cute words. This is one of my favorite things, an old coloring book. So, so many different things you can get from here. And if it's old, it has that, already has that discoloration from age on it. You know, even if it was just these lines with the numbers somewhere in my collage, that would be so fun. This, so many different things. Old coloring books are great. Look how cute they are. Fantastic. So, what I would encourage you to do is not just think about the fact that, oh, I don't really need a chicken. Okay, but with this pattern of the corn, you don't need corn, but would it be kind of cool just to have that pattern somewhere on your collage? Some old letters, probably one of my favorite things. This is an old greeting card. I tore this off to keep. Children's book that had music on it. Love the images, love the music, love the words. This is an old flower. Cornmeal container. Look at that. Cornmeal. I actually used it in our rooster project that we did. <laughs> Look at this tiny little book. Look at this discoloration. That's fabulous collage material just with that little spot of dirt and stain. Look at the edges of the papers, edges of the pages. These are all discolored and old. That's the best. Look up close. Oh, love it. Book pages are great. Here's another ideals. We don't need to go over that again, but they are fabulous. This is, you might have heard me talk about this. This is my book called Sex in the Garden. It is not, it's not rated X, I promise. It's about gardening. And it has all these great images, sketches, drawings. I've been using this for years and have not run out of options. Look at the leaves, all the different patterns. I love that they're hand drawn which I think is really fun. So this is a great book if you're looking for just one book to get a lot of different things. Children's books are one of my favorite things. So Little Golden Books, the Junior Elf Books. Look at this one with the little kittens. Isn't that cute? <laughs> yes, I love children's books. This is an old, old magazine. Is this Ladies Home Journal? McCall's. 1963 McCall's Magazine. And again, it does have a slight gloss, but look at all of the different things, patterns, colors, funny people. Look, they would be funny in a collage. So many different options. So, I mean, even her face, I could do that into a little, you never know. You never know what mood strikes, but this is fun. Even that color there. Anyway, I love the vintage ones, especially sheet music. People were talking about that. Here is a recipe book. We've got images. We've got different colors and words. And wrapping paper. Talked about that. And, of course, books. Any type of book. Any type of book page. A dictionary. A math book. A spelling book. This is a gardening book. Um, an encyclopedia of horticulture. So we've got images. We've got words. And there you go. You just got to root through part of my stash. Yay! Thanks, everybody.